Family Theatre presents Gene Lockhart and Cameron Mitchell. From Hollywood, the Mutual Network, in cooperation with the Family Theatre, presents The Door, starring Cameron Mitchell. And now, here is your host, Gene Lockhart. Thank you, Tony Lafrano. Family Theatre's only purpose is to bring to everyone's attention a practice that must become an important part of our lives if we are to win peace for ourselves, peace for our families, and peace for the world. Family Theatre urges you to pray, to pray together as a family. And now to our transcribed drama, The Door, starring Cameron Mitchell as Dennis. At one time or another, we have all had the feeling generally upon entering a strange room for the first time that this has happened to us before, and that in some fleeting, mysterious way, the past is recapturing itself. That being the case, who is to say that an incident which allegedly occurred in Europe over 500 years ago could not take place there again, as recently as 1944? Keep close to the building. Yeah. You see anything yet? No, I can't see my hand in front of my face. This night reconnaissance stuff is a joke. I'll punch your card for you, Lieutenant. Thanks. See, you know, maybe they've cleared out again. No, we'd have heard them. You can't pull a whole column of tanks out of town on a rope. Could be the crowd got nervous waiting for reinforcements and just walked out. Now, did you see them come boiling across the river this morning? No. I got news for you. They aren't nervous. Tiger tanks? Yeah, almost a dozen. Mm. That's why I can't think of any place they'd fit but down in the square. See, how's about I call Battery and give them a fix? If they bracket that square, they might strike oil. Unless the crowds are someplace else. In which case, here Commandant cuts loose his tigers down that main road and you got no battery. How about the center of the big stuff over? I use that. No, the colonel said not to count on it. They're concentrating on the bridges. Oh, if, if, if we could just get a clear look at that square without showing ourselves. Wait a minute. I got an idea. Yeah? Yeah. Come on. What's the deal, Lieutenant? You ever been up by that old deserted chateau near the Muse Bridge? No. Well, it overlooks the whole square from the west. I was up there taking pictures last week. It's kind of a long pull. That's way over the other side of town. Yeah, but we can still make contact from there on the walkie-talkie, can't we? Yeah, but it'll put the crowds between us and the battery. And if they start falling back, we'll have them right in our laps. Okay. So from then on, we'll play it the way it bounces. Well, you're the lieutenant. Thanks for reminding me. Come on. Hey, I don't get it. What? That crowd sentry we saw up there on the bridge? Well, he's not there now. Yeah, I know. Maybe he heard us going over the wall. Went around to get some help. Yeah, we better keep moving. Yeah, I thought you said that chateau was deserted. I could be wrong. Why? It looks like a light in that window on the top floor. Yeah. Well, they'll never spot us down here. <sighs> yeah, keep a little to the right. There's a break in the wall somewhere along here. Okay. <sighs> here we are. What? Look. Down the bluff. Hey, you're right. You can see the whole square from up here. And look at along the wall of the railroad station. Those are the tigers, all right. Yeah, all in a row. One, two. Yeah, yeah. What, are they all there? Everyone. Get a hold of the battery. You bet. Spider calling Roanoke. Spider calling Roanoke. Roanoke to Spider. Go ahead, Spider. We got them spotted. They're in the square. Range estimate. What do you think, Lieutenant? Oh, four to five hundred yards. Four to five hundred yards. They're at the south end, back of the railway station. Four to five. Check. Anything else? No. Good work. Now get out of there. All set, Lieutenant. Yeah. Well, we might as well get out of here. Oh! 
smoke. Get down, get down. Start crawling through that break in the wall. That sucked out sentry must have spotted us. Yeah, and there's more than one. It doesn't sound like it. It doesn't sound like they know where they're shooting at. Ich sehe nichts. Ich sage dir, ich habe etwas den Hügel hier aufhalten sehen. Now listen, we better split up. That way they can't shoot both of us. Wahrscheinlich ein Schwein. Ein amerikanisches Schwein. Good enough. Start down the bluff behind you. When you get to the river, head north. Na, die müssen doch irgendwo in diesem Hof sein. How are you going to get out of here? Over the back wall. Get going. Okay. Good luck, Lieutenant. Komm mal, komm her. Was ist denn los? Komm mal her, wenn ich dir das Befehl habe. Ja, ja. Was war denn eigentlich? Ein belgischer Hase? I wonder, wonder if there's any way I can get into this chateau until those two crowds pull out. No window's low enough on this side. Wait a minute. Looks like a flight of steps going down under the house. Well, any port. Dead end. You'd think there'd be some kind of a door down here. Oh, it's so blame dark. I... Yeah. There's a handle. Now what, what kind of a... Hier mal da. Das ist ein Loch in der Mauer drunten bei der Ecke. Ja, schon gut, schon gut. Wir werden uns das zusammen ansehen. Du bist doch solch ein Heldtanz. Und du benimmst dich gegen alle Regeln. Oh, oh. Da gibt's doch gar nichts hier. Ich sage dir, dass ich da was gesehen habe. Ach, du bist ja verrückt. Lass uns gehen. Der Kapitän wird uns ohrfeigen für die ganze Schießerei. See what kind of a wine cellar I got myself locked into here. It's like walking around in a well. If I, huh? Feels like a flight of stairs. Yeah. What? Another the door. It's, it's probably locked. If. Looks like some kind of a study. Whoever lives here must certainly be loaded. It's funny there's nobody... Please come in. What? Do not be alarmed. I have been expecting you. Oh. Oh, I get it. You, you play ball with both sides, huh? If you are referring to the German soldiers outside, no. I have no allegiance to them. You are safe enough in that respect. You mean you'll, you'll let me hide here for a while? A while? Oh, yes. Quite a while, Lieutenant. Well, you see, I wouldn't have broken into your cellar, but those two crowds came into the yard and the door was unlocked. Uh, yes, the door unlocked as you expected it to be, eh, Lieutenant? Expected? I believe that is the correct word. Mister, this, this has been a rough night for me so far. I've crawled over a mile on my hands and knees, been shot at twice, and now I'm behind enemy lines in a strange house, but strange? I don't... Strange? Oh, come now. I've never been here before in my life. You will permit me to have my own ideas on that subject. Well, you have them, mister, but if you were expecting somebody, I'm not the man. You are an American officer. You were billeted in this city before the Germans retook it this morning, were you not? Yes, but I... I thought so. I advise you to sit down and collect your wits, monsieur. Look, what's this all about? Who are you? I am the Vicomte de Guiche. My ancestors ruled this province. All right, so you're... Compared to them, I am a poor shadow. But I mean to honorably resolve this matter once and for all. Resolve what matter? Entre. Ah, si le vicomte, je... Oh. Entre, entre, Jean. La ruse a réussi. T'as-t-il avoué? Bien sûr que non. La jeune fille est-elle mieux disposée? Elle paraît plus résignée. Bon. Où est votre pistolet? Dans ma poche. Très bien. Quand je lui parle en anglais, montrez-le. Oui, monsieur le vicomte. Monsieur. Would you be kind enough to raise your hand? Say, what is the... That's better. Jean would like to relieve you of your sidearm. Jean, vous comprenez? Oui, monsieur le vicomte. Do all your servants carry guns? Only when there are predators in the vicinity. Monsieur. What's that supposed to mean, monsieur? Since you persist in feigning ignorance, I will confront you exactly with what it means. Jean, faites entrer la jeune fille tout de suite. Oui, monsieur le vicomte. I suppose it's a waste of time to tell you I haven't got any idea what you want or what you're doing. You will see what I want very shortly, my young friend. As to what I am doing, 
or will do, that must be a matter for you to decide. Look, who, who do you think I am? Just tell me that. You, you said you were expecting someone. M maybe if we start there. Entre, entre. Oh. Ah, Blanche, entre. J'ai ici un ami qui désire vous voir. Oh, who's this? Very amusing, Lieutenant. Eh bien, ma fille. Mais mon oncle, ce n'est pas l'homme. Je m'en doutais. Mais ce n'est pas l'homme. Monsieur, tell my uncle, have you ever seen me before? Have we ever met? No, I'm sorry to say we haven't. Very sorry. W will you please tell me what this is all about? This is impossible. Je n'ai jamais connu ce homme, je vous le jure. Alors, c'est une autre affaire. A young man, apparently I have made a mistake. I could have told you that. But I have no intention of compounding it into a calamity. You are not the right bird, but you are in hand. Mais c'est hein? impossible que vous soyez sérieux. Je suis tout à fait sérieux. Peut-être, comme vous dites, c'est la première fois que vous voyez le lieutenant. Mais moi, je ne connaissais pas votre tante avant notre mariage. Jamais je ne le ferai. Look, look, you're losing me again. I will leave to my niece the pleasure of giving you the details, monsieur. Sa décision est simple. Il vous épousera demain matin, ou bien il souffrira les conséquences. You have two hours, monsieur. I advise you to weigh your decision carefully. Two hours? To the minute. What's he talking about? Two hours? He has told you nothing? Nothing. I think he's crazy. No. Unfortunately, he's quite sane. My uncle is cruel. He has no heart. But his mind is sound. Well, what, what was that talk about two hours? Two hours to decide what? To decide whether or not you will marry me. Marry? You? I will tell you how, how it happened. It was nothing but an innocent flirtation. But my uncle living with his dreams and fancies. Oh, I'm so ashamed of what he's doing. Well, take it easy, take it easy. What happened? Nothing. Nothing of the slightest consequence. Two months ago, after your troops had driven the Germans out of the city, a young American officer began to come here near the chateau on Sundays with a camera. He would stand on the bluff and take pictures of the countryside. Well, I've been up here doing that myself a couple of times. Oh, yes, many of your soldiers have. Well, you are an American. You all like to laugh and yell at the girls. It, it is just so much teasing. I guess you think we could use some manners. Oh, no, I enjoyed it. There's been little to smile over these last years. And, well, this young American soldier joking would call out to me in very bad French. I would watch the troops from my window on the third floor. And I would call back, and that is how we became acquainted. And then? Nothing. We never met. I do not even know his name. And all this would have been forgotten if it were not for the letter. Letter? What letter? A note the young officer wrote me. A silly, foolish note asking me to meet him some evening here in the court of the chateau. Aha, uh -huh. and your uncle got hold of it. Yes. He's a suspicious man to begin with, forever thinking that people are trying to rob or dishonor him. And this note was all he needed, huh? I've tried to tell him, reason with him, beg him. He will not be swayed. Why don't you get out? Move to another town. He's my legal guardian. And besides, these last five years under the Nazis, it's been impossible to go anywhere without an official permit. Well, if I were you, I'd pack a bag and take off as soon as those krauts get pushed back across the river. You don't seem to understand. We are prisoners here, both of us. Oh, come now. Your, your uncle can't be serious about this, this marriage thing. I promise you, he's deadly serious. Well, well, it's crazy. We don't even know each other. And besides, it's... It... Come on. I'll set your uncle straight on this. I'm sorry. But Monsieur le Vicomte left instructions... Where is he? I want to talk to him. You have reached your decision, Lieutenant? I have. Well, that is good to hear. We want to talk to you. Of course. Rest there, la porte, Jean. Oui, monsieur le vicomte. Well, my young friend. First of all, I'm not the person you expected here tonight. I am willing to believe that. Second, even if I were, I wouldn't let you do a thing like this to Blanche. Are you finished? No, I'll tell you something else. I don't like people who try to push other people around. I don't care whether they're Germans or Frenchmen or Americans or Eskimos. I don't like them one bit. Indeed. Indeed. And you strike me as one of these people. 
You come from a long line of order givers, don't you? Well, you ought to wake up. What do you think guys like me came over here to do? Knock down a big dictator so we could set up a lot of little ones? Am I to understand that you are refusing my niece's hand? No, she hasn't offered me her hand for a perfectly good reason. She doesn't know me. She's never met me before. Do you find her appearance displeasing? Oh, mon oncle, je vous en supplie. No, 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 let me handle this, honey. That's a bright question. Well? Of course I don't. She's... she's beautiful. And her disposition? Is it not amiable? Of course it's amiable. That's not the point. Or... or... Well, yes, maybe it's just the point. She's sweet, pretty, intelligent. And she's got a mind of her own and rights of her own. And you ought to be ashamed of yourself trying to fob her off on a total stranger. You're not going to do it. No. No, so you just tell that bearded torpedo of yours to bring the lieutenant's gun in here because the lieutenant is leaving. I hate to disappoint you, young man, but you are not going anywhere. Now, you listen to me. I have listened long enough to realize that you do not understand the choice I have offered you. The ground upon which this chateau stands has been the site of bloody warfare for generations. At this moment, soldiers are fighting and dying all around it. And I promise you, Lieutenant, if you find your disinclination to marry my niece insurmountable, your dead body will be numbered among those on the hillside before sunrise. Man, you must be crazy. I shall only proceed to such an extremity with the greatest regret, for it is not at all your death that I desire, but my niece's establishment in life. A fine way to establish it. I assure you that neither my niece, nor you, nor my own private feelings move me at all in this matter. I believe the honor of my house has been compromised. C'est pas vrai! C'est pas vrai! Je le crois, c'est la vérité. And whether you, my friend, are the cause or not, you are now in the secret. So if I cannot cure the dishonor, I shall at least stop the scandal. There isn't any scandal. Can't you get that through your head? Not by your standards, perhaps. You swaggering louts are all the same. You have come to liberate us, and you think that gives you license to insult our women and trample our traditions? No, nobody thinks anything of the kind. Well, perhaps the cattle down in the city have resigned themselves to that kind of treatment from you, but not I. Les Américains ont été très corrects. Ils ont été dégoûtants. You have been offered the hand of a de Guiche, my friend. You shall not refuse it with impunity. Oh, I only wish you were a little younger. As do I, monsieur. It would give me the greatest pleasure to oblige you, but that is impossible. Faithful retainers like Jean are the sinews of old age, and I must employ the strength I have. Oh, mon oncle, c'est fou! Silence. Restez tranquille. You have until sunrise, monsieur. Somewhat less than two hours. At that time, the priest will arrive. No priest would have any part of a marriage like this. He will not be informed that it is a marriage like this. Do I make myself clear? Your padre's wasting his time. Tell him to stay home. I shall do no such thing. For if his duties when he arrives do not include officiating at your marriage, they will most certainly be needed for the administration of your last rites. What time is it now? Almost 5.30, Dennis. He's bluffing. You know, I, I still think he's bluffing. Don't you? I wish I did. Go on. Tell me some more about your family. Your younger brother, Edouard? No, Edward. <laughs> Edouard. <laughs> Wouldn't he love that? Is he like you? No. No, he's... Uh... Well, he, he's the family brain, wants to be a chemist. Is he in the army, too, somewhere? No, no, he's only 16. He tried to join the Marines last year. He came into the recruiting office in Cleveland with a big bass voice. I want to get in this fight, he said. Where do I sign up? <laughs> <laughs> what did they tell him? They told him to go home and wash his ears. <laughs> you, you must have a wonderful family, then. Oh, don't. Now, Blanche, come on, come on. But my uncle, he will kill you. It is so stupid and pointless. No, 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 Blanche, no. And, well, well, maybe it isn't so stupid and, and so pointless after all. What do you mean? I've been thinking about it. You see, I, I enlisted in this fight. I should go and get my card punched. Your card? 
Yeah, that's a kind of a, a kind of an army joke. It means you got a raw deal on something, so to prove it, you get your card punched. It's it's uh, just a joke. But you see, I enlisted to 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 help stop people from getting pushed around, and and well, that means anybody who's being pushed around over here, I guess, and I think you qualify. But it won't help me, Dennis, if you die. Yes. Yes, it will, if you work it right. Now, you go and tell the police how it happened, and that'll put your uncle out of circulation for good. It will. Oh, they'll hang him up by his thumbs. Who would believe me? All right, I'll, I'll tell you one man who'll believe you. The man who is with me tonight, Corporal Guthrie, Charles Guthrie. He's in my outfit. You look him up. Dennis, you need not die if you marry me. Are you kidding? Why not? It is for my own sake. I can see you are not a coward. I cannot let you be killed over a scruple. Thanks for the grand gesture. Gesture? Yeah, big, noble. But you're missing the whole point, Blanche. It's sour. It's wrong. You're letting yourself be pushed around. But it need not be a real marriage. After the ceremony, you would be free to go. It could be annulled. Look, I know you're trying to help me, and thanks. But it won't do. How can you say that? Because, because it, it, it isn't the way to do things. Maybe your uncle's right. Maybe we Americans are what he called us, swaggering louts. But, but, you see, we understand a promise is a pretty serious thing. And a man shouldn't be forced to make one unless he means it. Even if pretending to make that promise would save his life? I, I don't think so. I see. No. I don't think you do, Blanche. You... Look, if I stood up in front of that padre of yours, and if I said, I take this woman to be my lawful wedded wife, well, that's what I'd mean. It wouldn't make any sense any other way. Dennis, look, it's getting gray in the east. Remember those, those German tanks I told you about down in the square? They're gone? All gone. <laughs> yeah, in a couple of hours, the MPs will come into town again and put up the off-limit signs. The war is almost over, isn't it, Dennis? I think so. A few more months, maybe. What would you have done after the war? Oh, uh, I don't know. Go back to Cleveland, take up where I left off. Do you have a girl in Cleveland? No. No, not a, not a steady girl. Denise? Yeah? You... you told my uncle you thought I was not unattractive. Oh, sure I did. You? Oh, well, you're fine. You'll do fine. And you admitted I had a pleasant disposition. Well, he didn't need me to tell him that. Then, would I not make a good wife? Oh, uh, sure. A, a great wife. I'll... You, all, all you need is a chance to get out and meet a few people. The way this crazy uncle of yours has, has you cooped up in here, I'm not surprised you were waving out the window at every doe face that came up the I hill. I was not waving Some at everyone. Some shaved tail you never even knew. No wonder he was writing notes to you. It was not notes. It was one note. And it meant nothing. Maybe nothing. not to you, maybe not to you, but what about him? He's probably gaga Of over all you. the childish Sure, nonsense. childish. You watch. You'll be climbing up that hill again next week with a whole new approach, and you'll give him the high sign. <laughs> oh, Dennis. Yeah, yeah. It's very Dennis. funny. Very funny. I'm not laughing at Just you. Just as long as he's got a uniform. You're jealous. You just... I don't even know the guy. I want you to be. I want you to care who looks at me, who talks to I me. I don't care. You do. You have told me your whole life, and you have offered to sacrifice that life for me. For me. I told you why I was doing I that. I don't believe it. I don't believe your pretty speeches about honor and pledges and promises. Believe what you want. I believe that you have fallen in love with me, and that you are afraid to say so. Two hours. Who falls in love in two hours? You have. All right. What of it? I have two. Oh, no. I don't believe you. You're, you're just trying to help me out of a jam. Of course. When you love someone, you do anything to help them. You will? Yes. That's why you try to help me. Come in. Good morning, Lieutenant Blanche. Good morning. Well, 
Well, what? The priest has arrived. What is your decision? Uh, my decision? Come, come, what is it to be? Well, first of all, it is to be a church wedding in town. Denise. Not something pulled off in this penitentiary of yours. As you wish. And secondly, you are not invited. I'm afraid You I... just think you're afraid. You show up in that church this morning, and I'll really give you something to shiver oh, about. Denise. But my good man... Uncle, I... I am neither good nor yours. And let me tell you something else very important. If you ever understand me, ever turn up in Cleveland, and that's Cleveland, Ohio, and I find out about it, I can't answer for what'll happen to you. This is Gene Lockhart again. I suppose almost everybody believes in God. You might wonder if some people just acknowledge the fact of God, like we acknowledge the law of gravity, and having acknowledged it, take no further interest. Well, it depends on what kind of a God we believe in. Nobody can pray to an abstraction. On the other hand, why should some mere life force, even though labeled God, take the slightest interest in the individual? or the individual family. But if we realize that our relationship to God, in addition to being a public duty, is also a personal and an intensely intimate matter, and if we understand that He is our loving Heavenly Father, why then we begin to have confidence in His help and to form the custom and tradition of daily family prayer. And once we establish that custom, our family, whoever we are, becomes very sacred. And our home, whatever it is, a sacred place. Family theater urges us to do just that, each of us, for our families, so that we may say, with millions who are doing the same, the family that prays together stays together. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. From Hollywood, Family Theater has brought you transcribed The Door, starring Cameron Mitchell. Gene Lockhart was your host. Others in our cast were Gladys Holland, Edgar Berrier, Ben Wright, Fritz Feld, and Paul Savage. The script was based on Robert Louis Stevenson's immortal classic, The Seer de Malatois' Door, and was written and directed for Family Theater by John T. Kelly, with music composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman. This series of family theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who feel the need for this type of program, by the mutual network which has responded to this need, and by the hundreds of stars of stage, screen, and radio who give so unselfishly of their time and talent to appear on our family theater stage. To them and to you, our humble thanks. This is Tony Lofrano expressing the wish of family theater that the blessing of God may be upon you and your home, and inviting you to be with us next week when family theater will present... It's a gift, starring Jim Backus. Danny Thomas will be your host. Join us, won't you? Family Theater is broadcast throughout the world and originates in the Hollywood studios of the world's largest network. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.